All right, what's up? We're Cold Claw from San Jose, Bay Area, California. Black Metal Crust. Uh, I'm Ben, do vocals. I'm Brandon, guitar. Will, drums. Chris, I'm the bassist. Well, we all, we all came from different projects, so we all knew, had the same love for, for music. And, uh, but I think what the main thing was is we were kind of tired of the status quo. We wanted to kind of reach out and bridge the gap between some genres that currently take place in San Jose. Um, so yeah, so when we, when we first started, everything just started flowing really smooth and we knew that, you know, this is gonna be a coherent project. And so, so that really gave us a lot of encouragement. I think uh, San Jose, the South Bay, is one of the toughest places as far as booking because what little venues we do have continue to get shut down, and that seems to be a theme that uh, is constantly arising in San Jose. So there's only a few spots left. Um, we're trying to make the best best of what we do have, but uh, yeah, we're looking kind of outwards towards other cities now as far as our target areas, but always going to keep the uh, the hometown pride as well. From the beginning, we, we knew this is going to have some power behind it when we first started jamming. So, so when, it, when it came time to put out the demo, we were excited. We were already pushing, we were already you know, promoting for it. Um, we recorded everything in a live format, which is kind of just, we just go in there, mic everything, fucking play it on one track, and then have our friend mix it. And so it came out so well that we were just excited to put it out. So once we did, it's, you know, it's been a good feeling. And... Uh, yeah, that demo, which is called the Cold Cloud demo, you can find it on, you know, um, YouTube, Thank all that stuff, Man Camp. So, but yeah, we're really excited about it. Definitely, that demo was a lot of fun, and we, uh, we recommend listening to it. <laughs> that video, um, I have, I actually tattoo for a living, and so I have a lot of clients and friends throughout the years that, you know, they have a trade that we usually have some sort of deal where I tattoo them and they do a favor or they trade their, their artistic or creative abilities. Um, and so I had a friend that we actually, me and this dude used to work at a hardware store with and um, he got into videography and stuff and so he wanted to build his portfolio so we asked him if he'd be down to trade some, some tattoo time for uh, a little like low budget video. He just has really nice cameras and he knows how to use the editing system so yeah it was uh, just kind of everything fell together. That's why what, what he said that we knew it was going to have power from the start is We've all been doing what we've been doing for so long and have different connections in different fields that we kind of it's we're kind of set for success in a way without sounding in any way confident, you know what I mean, in our own work. But we, we definitely know that like we have a lot of ties to be able to make stuff happen. I think I think being confident is definitely, you know, it's, it's, an, it's important because you want to project success right out the gate. You know, you don't want to just wait around for someone to come to you. You want to come to them with the noise. I feel like that's what we're doing, so. Yeah, that's what we've been doing from the start. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 pretty, um, it's pretty nice to have such support. You know, we all have a lot of friends here. And, uh, and so, we, so we knew that was going to be fun. But, our, you know, we got, we're looking outwards in, into the future, into different cities and seeing. We, got, we can't take uh, what we have here and expect that to be every city, you know. We're still, we're still humble, but we're confident, you know, it's important to have both. Our last two shows that we've had within like East Bay and San Francisco weren't the best turnouts, but Golden Bull was a good turnout. Golden Bull was yeah, a good turnout. Okay. But San Francisco, yeah, San Francisco was a, was pretty like dismal. But we had bad luck. <laughs> All the shows, every show was full of bands from San Jose, so there was no local support. It was kind of just it, it wasn't poor booking. It was just other bands weren't available, and so trying to get bands from the area to you know to be mm -hmm. to be there to kind of be the main support or whatever it is or even headline. We were just trying to get the bills to be busy and they just didn't really have that as great of a turnout as we wanted. But but we're not discouraged though. We no, are not. we are very <laughs> you know we're looking forward to what the future has to come. Yeah. I guess I'll start. I mean uh, I came from a background of hip hop. I was in a hip hop band for 15 years and uh, so that was kind of my my upbringing. You know grew up in the in the 80s where it's all about hip hop. So that was my main uh, my main influence at first. And then uh, got into another punk band, and then that kind of expanded my horizons. And from there, just extreme music came to me. Like, it was a fucking shining orb, glistening fucking new thing that was exciting. And so uh, that's my background, yeah, pretty much. 
Uh, I mean, I was, you know, young and into Zeppelin and Black Sabbath and then, you know, into Metallica, Maiden and everything else and then on to, like, Black Dahlia Murder and, like, all the other, you know, more extreme but hardcore death metal type bands and, like I said, we were all in, like, a band had breakdowns and parts for circle pits and, you know, we were a metalcore band, what you could describe, but, like, Misery Signals and a lot of, like, bright hardcore type stuff, like Defeater, Modern Life is War. My, my taste goes kind of all around the board as far as my influences, but then, like, you know, Burzum and other black metal type stuff, Emperor. And yeah, I think, uh, I think that genres, if you put a genre on your band, it can be defining. It can kind of, it can kind of uh, back you into corners in a way. But, uh, we try not to take it too seriously. I know there is some stigmas on certain genres, like for instance, you know, you know, true, you know, cult black metal fans won't like hardcore. Hardcore fans don't understand what's going on with black metal, vice versa. But uh, that's kind of why we're here, we're bridging the fucking gap, you know? And uh, we're gonna fucking start bringing that noise, the energy that we get when we play for us and for them, you know, that's where the fun's at. You know, also in writing, we have a good time. We're all fr we're all friends outside of this band too. So there's a lot there's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, the lyrical content is pretty much straightforward, serious. You know, dealing with you know darker issues, dark darker topics. But uh, oh yeah, it's a lot of fun to play. Absolutely. Uh, you know, merch is is one of the key factors in keeping the gas in the tank. You know, keeping the cycle moving. It keeps the wheel going. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It's we're not trying to make a million dollars off this by any means we just want to keep something going and what better way than to like push stuff out as we're as we're feeding the fire for more merch i mean we yeah. basically buy merch sell it and put that money right back into more merch <laughs> so yeah it's basically a little yeah. relevant <laughs> yeah basically this guy just pretty much organized everything and we all just kind of scramble <laughs> around and do everything else so it's like but uh that, but yeah things are going great we have a shitload of merch shitload of new opportunities coming our way super exciting yeah, this year um, we have a southern trip planned um, for, for in a couple months. We're going to be doing some shows down South Vegas and L.A., possibly San Diego. So we're going to branch out down there. Then uh, we have our record, our full-length album called Punish the Blind, coming out, coming out sometime around April. So we're really looking forward to that. And then, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to keep blanketing the West Coast with shows until we can't blanket anymore, and then we're going to fucking move on. But uh, there's a lot of things that we're working on right now. We're really excited. We got another music video in the works. Um, new merch. New merch brand. We got some really great artists doing merch for us, um, doing some merch designs. Album artwork for the full length. Yeah, a lot of things coming down the pipe. We're really excited, man. Yeah. Um, Bandcamp is where you can find our music, um, and uh, as well as YouTube. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Um, we answer all fucking messages. Hit us up. You know, any inquiries? We don't have really a place online that we're selling merch right now other than we're taking orders on the Facebook and the Instagram. And I don't know if there's anything else you guys can think of. Um, Ritual Sound Records is who is who is putting out all of our um, latest CD endeavors so far uh, with the demo as well as the full length. So um, Chris from Ritual Sound has a online website. I believe it's ritualsoundrecords.com. He has our demo right now up for sale as well as uh, some merch and we'll be having the full length when that releases. I mean, if you follow him on Facebook or Instagram, he will have all the, the release dates and everything upcoming for us as well. I believe our stuff's also, if you're in the North Bay, it's, uh, it's in Amoeba Records right now. There's, there's a handful of demos there and there'll be some um, at... Uh, Rasputin. In, yeah, in when the album comes out, yeah, closer to April, yeah. they'll be available at Rasputin as well. So there's gonna be posters and a bunch of stuff promoting the album there, and as well as some stickers and stuff. People can stop by and check out. Hopefully, any show flyer as well will be there. So that's another bulletin board.